my name is Sadaf Hussain, as you already mentioned, and uh, I love street food. You all should love as well. And that's the shortest TED talk ever. Thank you very much, and I will leave. <laughs> well, uh, not really now because you have all. I mean, I have all your attention. So let's get to business, which is of eating. Because I that's what I do. I eat, right? Uh, and I eat raw pork when I'm in Mumbai. Take a bite, and then we'll talk. Maybe because I'm here to talk something, so I'm just talking. Okay. Every street in India, or actually around the world, has a story, has a texture to narrate. It tells you the kinds of people living around in the city. If you go to a posh area, you will see fancy cars and other fancy things. If you go to not so fancy ghetto kind of places, you will find a similar kind of men, women strolling or loitering around, whatever word fancies you. Um, and that's what it narrates. What it tells you, the kind of people live there, the kinds of people live there, the, the kind of food that they have, the entire aura and aroma of the city, of that street. Every food has a story. Now, when I was coming to this place, I live in Delhi. Delhi, there's an old joke, Delhi is always under construction. And uh, that is true for Mumbai as well these days because it was been coming here since almost one and a half years, regularly every two months, and it's under construction. But tell me one thing what are the visible changes that you see right in front of you while the city, quote unquote, is being constructed and when it is done? One, when it is being built, you will see a lot of smaller chole, kulche, chole, batude, vada pao, sandwich, and all those stalls sitting right outside selling you, you as in the people working that food. Once it is all sorted, then you have trim, proper, fancy restaurants, ice cream carts sitting right outside. So what changed between these two? People. You still have the same people, as in people are people, as the same. But the kinds of people change, the caste, the class, all these things changed. Now all these small carts are pushed away to one side. So that it does not bother the beauty of the same building which perhaps they only built. And that's what tells us the story or the cultural evolution of a city. From a common man who eats a regular kind of food to somebody who is little, little less common who would eat not vada pao but batter fried potato in some kind of homemade chutney inside a handmade and hand picked bread, not pow. Right, so that's what changes. There's another visible change that you can see. Salko Pena, Shahaki Roof, was here. But what is that roof? And what is that soul? <laughs> Street food is what I call it. Because street food builds the nation. It does not just tell you where is this particular street food is coming from, but how it is coming from, right? What is the one thing which is common between Jhal Muni? Anybody from Bihar will know what Jhal Muni is called. Um, what about Samosa, Chulibutude, Chulibutche, Tikka, 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 Tikka. What's the common thing? We all eat it, so that's one common thing about it. Uh, but beyond that, the major common thing about it is that it's, it is a window to understand about somebody else's culture, to understand about the evolution of the food and what has happened to a particular food over the period of time. Um, quick example would be, we all know about Kareem's in Delhi. Well, it was from Delhi now, it's global now. Uh, in one of my interviews, one of my discussions, with the owner of, one of the owners rather, of Kareem, he started telling me about how they started, right? Haji Kareemuddin, the first guy who started this, came up to Jama Masjid with a small car, food cooked by his wife, 
by the way, just saying, you think Adi Karin Muti, no, they, no. it was a family effort, right? Wife will make the food. Tomato ghost, a very popular delicacy back in days in Muslim household. Now you have Ali ghost. Uh, and the very popular Korma. These two along with Roti, and that's about it. This, he as a Haji Karim team, he learned it from his father, who in return was in the Mughal court. Now, again, he as in the wife and him both. Once they started putting up the street food, this was sold to the Rahis, to the Musafir, to the street travelers. Mostly not so well off people, because the well off people will go all the way inside the court and have delicious food, not so well of people will have street food. But think about this now, where, where do we think about street food and curries? No, street food has changed and has evolved to become a restaurant. Let's take a flip side, which is tea. All of us drink tea. Started with this very elite English thing. A way of drinking tea is to drink in a porcelain cup with a dash of milk, maybe sugar, maybe not, we don't know, depending on how fat or thin you want to be. And suddenly, when it was introduced to India, it became a street food. Democratized to a different level. It's got milk, of course, not just a dash of milk, but more milk and less water and less tea, or the other way around, depending on the pure palate. Now you have teas like lemongrass, lychee, adada, masala, full on biryani in the tea, right? Because what's so masala? An elite thing suddenly became a street food. So things changed. Let's talk about Maggi. Actually, maybe not. Because we all know about Maggi, it's an unofficial, official food for students, lovebirds. Wait out hours and the wonder lustres. Let's go to mountain and we will have the local food of the mountain. What's the local food of the mountain? Maggi, of course. Look, what else? Or maybe the beaches. Mountain because I live close to the mountain. I mean, very close to the mountain, if you believe that. Uh, so, that's how things change. Now, every face, every place, and every plate has a story to relate. My story is simple and yet complex because it's a love story with food and I personally think love stories should be complex because if it's simple then there's no fun because we remember stories like Romeo and Juliet and Bajmi Farhar but we don't know about Sunita and uh, Ravi's story because we don't know who is Sunita and Ravi. so that's how the complex thing it should be. Um, what is growing up in a small town in Jharkhand, now maybe it's a big town, I don't know, I haven't been there since a while. Um, I learned a lot of different things from street vendors. Many big time chefs or many popular faces will credit that, oh, I learned this from that person. Right? And that person most likely to be another big face, like a popular known face. I, on the other hand, learned how to chop onion from Raju Bhai, who used to make Pani Puri, which is in Jharkhand called Gupchup. Not even going to Pal Puchka, it's called Gupchup. Why? Because you cook and then you chuk. That's the logic. Um, the best ones. And Raju Bhai was the best when it comes to chopping. And, um, then there was the other guy taught me how to boil noodles, ensuring they don't stick together by adding some extra oil. Then there was a small dhaba close to my house uh, who, was, who was very great at making chicken manchurian. He would call it chicken manchuri. So I believe it was chicken manchuri. Then Muhammad Yaqat, or as we call it Maulana Yaqat, he used to make really nice crispy pakora and he told me not to dip my hand in hot oil. Which now when I think it's more logical, but yet he told me and I'm giving him that credit that he first mentioned. But even though I remember one of the shoots I was doing, I didn't dip my finger, actually not only just dip it and then, but yeah, so don't dip your fingers. That's what in hot oil, that's what Maulana Yaqat told me and I would follow him. As well. uh, so, what I'm trying to say is, all these street food vendors will teach you the best thing that they have learned. Why? Because that's the only thing that they know. Because that's the best thing that they know. There are specialty stores, right? If somebody is making chole or vada pao, that's the only thing that person is making for donkey years. Why? Because that's what he knows, or that's what she knows. And hence, 
the street food gives you that love, as a they bring their love. There are certain advantages, by the way, of eating street food. It's easy to pick up, go. It's affordable for not just for students but for many, many, many people. It's available everywhere, and we should also always remember that not everybody comes in Jaguar, but there are people who come in Wagonar as well. So the street food is for the Wagonar people, and also Jaguar as well. I mean, depending if you are food level like me, not that I have Jaguar, but just say. Uh, anyway. Um, also, the other benefit of street food is that they are prepared fresh. The difference between street food and fast food, right? They are prepared fresh right in front of you with all their local spices, local flavor, and some sort of secret masala which you don't know. Because they would say, oh, this has 150,000 kinds of spices. But if we don't know, it turns out to be only cumin and salt and that sort of But what it also does is that you can ask. Damn questions to all these guys. But yeah, ye, jo butter type dal lo, butter hai. Ha, ha, Ajo, nimbu type ke, nimbu hai, bhai, nimbu hai. You can question, and I'm sure you have seen all these food videos of bloggers and what kind of questions they will ask. You can also ask such smart questions till the cows come out. Ask them, both them, whatever you feel like, but do it. So that's how the food, they are innovating, right? They are in the street food vendors are innovating by giving you a window in their life. Uh, to understand that eating food gives you the opportunity to know them better too. It's like a, again a window, you know them. Why? Um, Bombay, Mumbai, the famous street food is what about? It reflects the way Mumbai girls are, which is never stop, always hustle, right? You pick up the Wada Pao and you run. You come to Delhi, there is hustle culture, but there's also a relaxed atmosphere. The street food. The most common street food is chole padule, chole kulche. You can't just grab and go. There's no wrap and roll and eat and grab. No, you'll have to sit down. Things will happen for sure. Same goes with Lucknow, Nawabi people. Sit down, have your food, then go. That's what it tells. Right? In Bihar, popularity of Lipti Chopa is because of the availability of lentils and so on and so forth. What you're doing here when you eat their street food is understanding how people are, how they evolve through and through. And thereby, you're also getting sort of to know them and respect their culture. In the modern times, of course, the taboo of eating the other kind of food is going down. That's what I would like to believe. But not so much. We still fight. My food is better than yours and your food is better than mine. But like that. <laughs> they will fight for it. Um, and I tell them, no, I mean, there is no point of fighting because what they eat is best for them, what you eat is best for you. Many, many, many walls can be literally uh, be over if you eat food together, if you sit down and you have interaction together. Right? Then evolution is there in the food space itself. How is the evolution happening? Street food has stories. You stand near a giant tapari and you start talking to people. You will know almost everything happening in that society or the news of that day. Restaurants don't have such stories. You talk to your immediate friend or whoever you're sitting with. But what the restaurants started doing that they picked the street food and then they brought it to the restaurant. Now there are multi billion restaurants serving you street food. Good, best, better, awful, I don't know, but they are serving such things. And now the stories which were on the streets have come to street food restaurants. Fabulous things are happening. If you go back in time, what were peasants or not so well of people eating? Uh, they were eating chawal and rai bread with grilled fish mostly, some kind of beer and pottage. Mm, doesn't sound appetizing, right? Now, let's think about the same thing in a, in a fancy artisanal kind of restaurant. You get an artisanal bread made out of jawal and rai bread, grilled fish to perfection, some butter on top, served with PQA, 699 rupees plus GST. Right? That's how it changed. They innovated the same peasant food, which once it was, but not anymore. It is now our food. We love our food. 
that's how things are evolving. Of course, street food are also evolving, and I don't deny it. Street foods are not evolving. They are. That's why you're seeing butter and lots more butter. You're getting cheese and cheese and cheese, right? And you have random things put in your chai, like gulab jamun, and also other things of ice cream, like dosa. But you're seeing all these things. These are also your street food. You need to embrace them as much as you embrace your vada pavs or your misra pav or your chola vada. Everything has stolen. The great chef in Italy, uh, he mentioned Chef Marjasi. He mentions that street food is history. When you eat street food, you become part of the history. So that's what I would like to invite all of you to eat street food. Don't listen to other people's stories. Create your own. Go to a street food vendor and ask for the food whether your food is good or bad, because that's how you will be able to celebrate different culture. Different diversity and class and caste divide might just also go away. So I'm going to go back to my vada pav. My name is Sadhguru Sanjeev, and I still love street food. Thank you.